In the UK, someone gets a parking ticket every three seconds. You can appeal again. Oh, we'll appeal, don't worry. I think it's disgusting. With more cars than ever on our roads, the battle over parking has reached boiling point. Is there any questions you want to ask me, Neil? sleep at night? You people, you rob the general public. You're an absolute firm. Just take your heart out and just leave it at home. With space at a premium, councils need parking controls. We've got a board that says car park full, and they drive around it. Engines off, doors open. She's got a baby and can't even park outside her own bloody hell. I'm going to allow the appeal, you don't have to pay. Oh, I feel great. But for many, parking enforcement is a direct attack on motorists. It's just about the money. In my opinion, they are bloodsuckers. You've got no compassion doing the job that you're doing. And staff are in the firing line. Come back round here and we'll shoot you. It's the most common thing you'll hear up here. If you are civilised, you will not tell somebody that I hate you. As they deal with parking madness. You might as well just stand here and nick it off of people. When I say I hit them, I mean I hit them. Civil enforcement officers have been issuing fines to law-breaking motorists for the past 50 years. When they first took to the streets, there were just 40 of them. Now, there are nearly 4,000. You can appeal again, I Oh, we'll appeal, don't worry. Yes. You don't can worry. appeal and say, don't worry. Your, and say your reason. That a you disabled, say. disabled person, are you, are you yes. pussy? Tenbe is a civil enforcement officer for Sandwell Council in the West Midlands. I am delivering, I am delivering chocolate. You're delivering chocolates? Explain why, the reason why I give you a I issued a ticket. Because I stood there for almost five to six I minutes. I was just getting the order. That's right. all. She had to tell me what she wanted. Last year, 6.8 million fines, known as penalty charge notices, were issued. You know, they've got me. So I feel horrible. And, you know, they've just got nothing better to do, I think, sometimes. We'll just book you for booking sake, I'm afraid. You've got no way out, have you? You've just got to try and keep out of their way, <laughs> basically. <laughs> but they are a bane of my life, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> They get really frustrated and then they think the only option is to take the ticket and stick it back to you. Maybe either on your hand or your chest. People calling you names and telling you go back to your country and all that. It doesn't upset me as long as I do my job properly. The majority of parking tickets are paid on time. But when motorists try to evade them, they face even tougher enforcement. You cannot go down anymore. Mum of three, Debbie, has been a bailiff for eight years, specialising in the recovery of unpaid parking fines. We've got our AMPR system, which can automatically pick up number plates, so it makes it easier for us on the road that if they're not at their home address, that we could pick them up. We've got four cameras, two at the front and two at the back. It has this funny um, it's man, because it's a male thing, and it goes, attention. The police are targeting vehicles with no tax or insurance. Working alongside them, Debbie's looking for vehicles with unpaid parking tickets. Morning. To help her catch them, the bailiff's van is parked around the corner, watching every car that passes. We've just been picking up cars on the NPR, and it'll flag if a car uh, is wanted for non-payment of parking fines. That's obviously quicker than looking on a list, and uh, we can literally find all the information on our computer and let our colleague know. OK, Ben, we're just pulling it in now. Her partner, Ben, alerts Debbie to a vehicle of interest, and the police stop the driver. Hi, sir. My name's Debbie. I work for a company called White & Co. We're certificated by this. There is an outstanding parking fine on this vehicle. At the moment, there's an outstanding debt of £517.84 that needs to be paid immediately. On this car? Yep. On this very On this vehicle, yeah. I can't pay, I can't pay tickets. Then we're going to take the car. You can't take the car. It's not possible because I am 100% sure 
I've paid the ticket. Well, sir, the council have sent it over to us, so as far as we're concerned, it's not being paid. You either pay it or we're going to take the car. The choice is yours. The council's original fine was £130, but hundreds of pounds have been added by the bailiffs for their services. Every letter they send or house visit they make increases the fine. It's quadrupled the amount this driver now has to pay. The ticket you showed to me has been paid. Yeah, what you present to me, no. What you present to me is a wrong paper. Why do you lie? Why do you lie? Sir, I'm not Why do you lie? You are lying because you told... No, 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 no. Don't tell me. Don't point your finger at me. You don't point your finger at me. You told me... I need to shout because... Bailiff companies are issued warrants of execution, allowing them to legally remove goods to the value of the debt. You are a liar because you, you told me I owe you a ticket on this car. I never owe you a ticket. That's the information I was given. Listen to Why what you're Why do you present the wrong information to me? That's the because you want to make money I for your told, council. Sir. Now you are bringing ticket that I don't even know nothing sir. about. We're not bullies. We're not thugs. Yes, we can be a bit hard and harsh about people's situations and they've got to make their payment. But if they choose not to pay their parking fines, that's no one else's fault but their own. The ticket they are telling me today that I need to pay is an old ticket that I've been sorted out. No. And I'm not ready to release this car today. So I don't know what was going to happen today. I'm telling you, I'm ready for them. Motorists can challenge their parking fines at a tribunal. My name's David Binns, I'm the adjudicator. You've asked for a hearing, so this is your opportunity now to provide further information. The Traffic Penalty Tribunal, or TPT, is made up of 32 independent adjudicators. Right, now which side did you reverse in from? They travel the country hearing parking appeals. Mr Coverdale, oh, sir. Text. Good morning. Good morning. It was not clear to me that actually this street, the parking rules did even apply. That's where my car was parked. Yes. That's the lamppost next to my car. But paying the fine wasn't the problem. No. It's just the principle of the thing, you know. It's, it, actually, it's designated as a, a walkway. They just neglected to tell anybody. Apart from that... Apart um, from the, the three-foot-high yellow man painted on the ground. Right. Christian Daniels is waiting for his hearing. What I'm particularly perturbed about is the fact that I genuinely parked my car I genuinely paid £2.70 for an hour's parking, arrived back there, 59, 60 minutes, to find a vulture putting a ticket on my windscreen, and I don't think that's right. Christian runs a water cooler company in the northwest and received a ticket whilst parked in Manchester city centre. When you pay for a parking ticket for an hour, you expect exactly an hour, not 59 minutes or a, you know, a minute and ten. You expect exactly an hour. It's the council, really, that are to blame. When I sent the appeal in, I asked for a copy of the traffic warden's notes so I could see, you know, her version of what had been said. And Manchester Council, the nerve, sent me a, a letter back saying that I'd need to submit a freedom of information request. A freedom of information request for a copy of the traffic warden's notes. Unbelievable. We're not sending rockets to the moon. It's a parking ticket for 25 quid. I just think the, petit, the purposely being awkward so the motorist will think, oh, I've had enough of this, just pay the 25 pounds. So we've got until quarter two. The council rejected Christian's appeal, but he's refusing to give up the That's fight. But it's not just about me, is it? There must be 20 million motorists all parking. And, you know, if certain people don't stick up for what they believe in, the whole country will be in a mess. For me, it's about the principle of the fact that you've gave me a ticket, I shouldn't have it because I've paid, so we'll, we'll have to go all the way then, won't we? That's... Campaigners across the country are taking a stand against what they believe are unjust parking charges. In East London, one group of crusaders have been challenging council parking enforcements for the past three years. My no two mob name is, uh, is Killswitch. And my uh, is Java Bike. I'm Coco. I'm uh, the Bald Eagle. 
Today, the No2 mob are targeting a CCTV enforcement vehicle in Walthamstow. The camera car is on the lookout for motorists tempted to turn right at this junction. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, no, no, no. It's all right. A traffic jam like this, and then people think, oh, I can just nip across. And of course, Maisie over there, he loves that, so please go that way, yeah. Good man. There we go. Woo. For any cars caught on camera, there's a fine. Don't turn right, because there's a camera car back there, he'll give you a ticket. <laughs> Someone's finally standing up and saying, you can no longer use the motorists as cash cows. And that's what they're doing. It's just about the money. Well, he would give you a ticket of £130 in the post if you turned right. Why don't he stand here and do what we do? He could stand here and prevent these things happening. Waltham Forest Council deny that raising revenue is a motivation. They say the CCTV cars ensure motorists abide by the rules of the road. We gain intelligence, we find out where their pound is, where they send them out from. We go there, then we follow them. The mob are made up of retired professionals, IT consultants, and even an ex-diplomat. I mean, we're actually saving people from getting unlawful tickets, we believe, and doing a public service. Beep, 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 beep. They're just trying to ruin their revenue stream. Even the bus drivers love us. At the roadside operation, bailiff Debbie is trying to collect an outstanding parking fine. But the driver is claiming he's already paid. Ben, have we got any other information or are we waiting for the office to load it? Further checks reveal the original fine has been paid. Is it on the system yet? But Debbie uncovers two further unpaid parking tickets that also carry heavy bailiff charges. So, unless you're going to pay by chip and pin payment now of 933.68, we're going to take your car. You're going to do what? We're going to take the car. We're going to sell the car? No, we'll take it and then we'll sell it after five days. <laughs> You're going to sell the car. To avoid losing his car, the owner pays up. Up to this minute, I've spent almost nine to 10,000 pounds paying fine ticket. So if you park less than a second, before you turn your eye, you say ticket. You mean some ticketing officer, they even do it deliberately. They dodge somewhere, and once they see you that you just turn back, they quickly come and paste a ticket on your car. They are making life miserable for people anyway. And when I say I hate them, I mean I hate them. Cross out, I hate them. I'm a happy bunny now that I've uh, actually got the payment and a result, and see if we can meet some more happy customers. <laughs> Away from big cities, councils in small towns and villages tend to take a more laid-back approach to enforcing parking regulations. Lyme Regis in Dorset is totally dependent on the summer tourist trade. Most tourists arrive by car, and the council is anxious not to put the visitors off. He's only paid the wrong tariff. Pay the all-day tariff for a car, £1.70. But for motorhomes, and it is, it's meant to be a pound an hour. I won't take it in just yet. I've got a warning on him. So if he comes back in the meantime, he'll see it and hopefully he'll move it. I think up in London they don't give you a chance. If you stop on the yellow line and pop into a shop, you come out, you've got a parking ticket. You know, but if you stop on the yellow line and pop into a shop, you come out, you've got a parking ticket. We're, uh, I think it's a bit different down here. I think we're more laid back. We're, uh, we're not vigilantes. The relaxed attitude and beautiful scenery draw in the crowds. But Lyme's big problem is there's just not enough space. No, there is absolutely nowhere. Can't park here. No, you're in a hatched area. 
Well, I can see it plain enough. You can't stand there and reserve a parking bay. He gets the space. He's here. You're not. I will go find you another space. You won't so really need space. the shade. No, you won't point. find one. No. There isn't one. There really is. There's a no, couple there isn't. We've just, been there. We've just been up there. He's there. You're not. The only reason we're doing this is we, we have a lame dog in the car. You've had a space, though. You've already had the space. We have been in here 10 minutes. Guys, we just really need it because of the dog. Hate things like that. You get dragged into arguments. We're the fighting over parking spaces. We've got a board that says car park full. You put it out in the road and they drive around it. They even look at it when they're going in. There's not enough parking in Lyme Regis. When parking tickets are given, many motorists feel they have been unfairly targeted. In Manchester, Christian Daniels is appealing his ticket at the Traffic Penalty Tribunal. I've come here to put my case across. And, you know, if, if the case has been that I need to pay the ticket, then I'll pay the ticket. Um, hopefully I'll win because of the fact that I've done some research and whatnot and looked into a few cases, so we'll have to go in and see what happens. Mr Daniels. Today, his case is being heard by independent adjudicator David Bins. Perhaps you could just tell me, first of all, about the, what, what exactly you were doing having left the vehicle. Is I run a small uh, company that, that installs and maintains and delivers water cooler and cups and accessories and whatnot. Yes. Manchester City Council have decided not to send a representative. So I didn't know that I was going to make a delivery right. at the time, so I knew that I'd need 20, 25 minutes, maybe 40 minutes, chatting to the customer about whether they'd want to become a customer or not. The well, having signed up the customer, yes. what, what happens then? Do you, do you then make a delivery? Yes, what, what happened then is I checked and I thought, oh, I've only been here 40 minutes, so we might as well then make the delivery. When I actually put the ticket in the car, mm. I set my phone alarm for 55 minutes to make sure that we were still within the time. Um, the phone's alarm's bleeping away when I've got the uh, delivery note signed. Right. So I said, right, we need to get back downstairs now. And how far is it back to the car? Oh, two minutes. Not even two minutes. And then I said to the traffic warden, hey, what's going on? And she said, you've got a ticket. And I said, it's not expired. There's literally, I mean, it was very fine, to be fair. It was close. And I said, it hasn't expired. And I showed her the watch. Did you see her take the photograph? Yes, I was stood there. 15, 17. Obviously, the ticket expired at 15.12 uh, uh, and the PCM was printed at 15.16. Uh, there is an exemption from these restrictions for loading and unloading. Having obtained the order from the customer, you were then permitted to leave the vehicle beyond the expiry time of the ticket in order to make the delivery. Yeah. And that was what you were doing when the PCM was issued. And for that reason, I'm going to allow your appeal on the grounds that the contravention did not occur. Okay. So that is the end of the hearing, and I will wish you good day. Don't get me wrong, I'm very, very happy with the fact that they cancelled the ticket, but I don't really feel like justice has been done because I parked the car, I paid for the ticket, and it was still in force. But what the tribunal have decided is the ticket wasn't in force, but you were loading. Well, that saved us 50 quid. Should we go and get a pint? You can get a pint and lunch. <laughs> I do enjoy the Parky Appeals. Uh, this is a part-time role, so I do other things as well. But um, uh, there's never a dull moment with parking. With the cost of parking rising in many parts of the country, motorists are going to extreme lengths to park for free. Just, just double-check for me. By committing blue badge fraud. It's a lady's badge. Finish you to a lady. And you're quite clearly not a lady. Expired date 26 of January 2014. The person's passed away. Steve is a blue badge investigator for Lambeth Council. Tell your partner that the badge belongs to her grandmother and you shouldn't be using it. In South London, half of all the blue badges on display are stolen, forged, or being misused. 
the investigation begins with a hunch more than anything because there are so many cars with blue badges. If I stopped and tried to deal with every single one, I'd be here for weeks. Steve spotted something suspicious. It's a vehicle that I saw this morning. Um, it's parked in a what we call a hot spot. It's near the underground station. It's near the shops. It's a elderly lady's badge, born in 1925. It's been parked here for a few hours, so I suspect that it was being misused. I'm just going to see if I can ring the owner just to see um, where they are. My name is Steve, and I, I work for Lambeth Council, and I, I deal with your disabled badge. Where is your badge? Where's your badge now, though? Do you have it with? Your daughter has it. Your daughter has it. Blue badges can only be used by the badge holder or by someone collecting or dropping them off. I've phoned the lady, spoken to her, and her daughter's using the badge. So we've had a penalty charge notice issued, and what we're doing now, we're waiting for a tow truck to come. The white one! The white one on the end. If people get a penalty charge notice, then they have a choice whether to pay it or not. If the car is towed away, they only have one choice. You go and pick your car up or it goes and it's crushed. And it is a very good deterrent. As the car's lifted up onto the tow truck, the owner returns. Officers on the front line of enforcement have to be prepared for any eventuality. Bailiff Debbie has pulled in another motorist for evading a fine. This time, it's a driving instructor, and he's in the middle of a lesson. Sir, you have got a car registered and an address that you do not live at. You are a driving instructor, you must know the rules, but you have not updated your DVLA. So you are committing an offence in itself already. So it makes no difference to me. You either pay the £1,500 and so many pennies, or we're going to take the car. Have you got the keys for the vehicle, sir? Right, this gentleman's got four tickets and what the problem is here is that he has had his car registered in an address that he hasn't lived at for three years. I could look at it that he's done that so he doesn't pay any of his parking tickets. So at the moment, he's got four tickets that need to be paid in full. So have you got no way of making a payment, sir? You're not going to ring anyone to help? An arrangement. No arrangement. No. Sir? We have been out to your address too many times. No, but you cannot what they told you when you get there. No, no one's answered the door, sir, so we're here for full payment. Well, it's obvious if the, the yeah, house probably is closed. Sir, you need to make the payment or we're going to do the removal. To complicate matters, the instructor was taking his pupil to her driving test. No, oh, where is he? He's going to pay for it. I'm sorry, he's going to pay for my test. I can't cancel it because it's closed. Yes. I'm going to lose my fee now. The office is closed, I can't cancel it. Can you stop ignoring me. You're going to have to reimburse all my money. You know that my test fee, everything that I paid you, to be honest. Uh, no. No, don't tell me no. There's no, 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 no. No, okay? no, no. The only thing that you hold for is for the test that you No, no, no. You're going to pay me everything, OK? Do you know how many hours we've lost now standing here? I was ready for my test today and this is what happens now. Look at me. The driver is unable to pay his outstanding parking fines, so the bailiffs call in a tow truck. But his day is about to get a lot worse. In Hertfordshire, residents of one street think there isn't enough parking enforcement. South Mill Road in Bishop Stortford is just a few minutes' walk to the train station. Commuters are using the road for free parking. It's all perfectly legal, but it's driving the residents mad. Uh, the fellow's just parking his car. He's trying to look nonchalant. That's, that's definitely a species of commuter. It's a What are you filming? You. Yeah, why? Because you're parking in my street where I live. Oh, well, right. And you're off to London on the train, I expect, to earn lots of money. 49-year-old oh, okay. truck driver Andy has lived on South Mill Road for more than 30 years. 
And it's really strange that this is the, this is the road that's closest to the station, and yet it's one of the only roads that hasn't got parking restrictions on it. It costs £7.20 a day to park at the station, but the car park's half empty. It's the pinstripe brigade, you know, it's the pink shirt lot. It's the guys that want to chase the dollar down in London. They want to earn big bucks down in London and they don't want to pay the car park charges, so they come and park here. But there is one, he's just getting out the right side. But suited and booted like that, you know, he's got to be on 100 grand a year, surely, if not more. It's just the morality of it. It's just the fact that people will park outside someone else's house and cause them great inconvenience, and they'll not, not have a thought. They've got no qualms about it at all. Someone's got to stick their head above the parapet. Whether you get labelled as nuts for it or not is, is here or there, but somebody has to do something. In South London, Blue Badge investigator Steve is removing an illegally parked vehicle. The owner returns just as the car is put on the truck. Hello. My name's Steve, look, Steve yeah. Jones from the council. Yeah. Unfortunately, the car's being towed away because there's a blue badge in it. That's, like, that's my mum's. It's your mum's, it's not yours. What happened is this morning, my mum asked me to do an errand for her. Yeah. Right, and I said to her, I'm going to be late for work. Right. Right, because I work in the city. The bottom line is you shouldn't be using no, your mum's badge. No, she told me, I didn't know that she, because I had to do something for her. Right. And I was going to be late. She told me to park my car, but I don't usually do that. OK. Now. I need to deal with you with this. Your car's got towed away. You can't have it back because it's on the tow truck, unfortunately. You have committed a criminal offence by misusing your mum's blue badge. OK. Vehicles that are illegally parked get issued a penalty charge notice by this gentleman. So you're going to have to pay the pound £65. The cost of that tow truck and the crew is £200. So you're going to have to pay the pound £265 before they will release your car. I was here before you actually put it on there. You could have let it down. I said, I'm going to get a fine. I've got to go and get my car and I'm still going to get a criminal record. Is that what you're trying to say? I've to explained the sir. Fair. Well, I've it's explained. Not right. It's not right that you park here this morning and go to work using yeah, your mum's enough. badge. Fair enough. It's not, you have it's to not accept the consequences. You, you take my car in front of me. Right. How do you sleep at night? Okay. That's the question. Is there any I questions ask you. you want to ask me How now? How do you sleep at night? Have Is you there... got children? Have you got a mother? Have you got a wife? Is there any other questions you want to ask me? No, I'm just asking okay. you one question. I'm not being rude, but I'm saying, how do you no. sleep at night? Yeah, well, that's nothing My to do with this. My mum is 89 years old. Okay. We'll, we'll move on. She was clearly frustrated. She wanted to vent her anger on somebody, and it was me, because I was there. One hundred and fifty miles away in Lyme Regis, tourists arrive for a day at the seaside. But there's not enough parking for everyone, so some motorists have ditched their cars in coach zones, on hatched areas, and on the grass verges. Even John's lenient approach has its limits. People do think you get a bonus for every ticket you write, but you don't. We don't. We're not told to. We have to issue X amount of tickets a week. Nothing like that. My mum moved down here after my dad died, and we've been coming down here for about 20 years on holiday. I love it. It's just that there's no work. So I do bits and pieces. Gardening, painting, decorating selling furniture last year but that sort of like dried up after a while it's a job you've got to do something you know you've got to pay you've got to pay your bills somehow they'll be peeved when they get back in Croydon a driving instructor who owes 1500 pounds for parking tickets he failed to pay is about to lose his car his student has just missed her driving test. He can't pay the fine, so he's emptying his car before it's towed away. Now, 
there's a knife. There's a screwdriver. Is he allowed to carry that? There's another screwdriver and there's a knife. That's nice. only for the weapon. But, sir, do you want to put Ele those down? No, no, no. Only oh, down. Put it down. Put it down. Put it down. As an instructor, is he allowed to carry a weapon in a car? They're, in, they're, they're, no, uh, they're tools. They're not tools. That's a knife. Are you allowed to carry a knife as an instructor? For my own for, safety now. For cut. Oh. Electrical. Okay, give me a hand. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. Alright, you're under arrest for possession of the point of bladed article, okay? You don't have to say anything, but it may harm your defence if you do not mention it. Stop resisting. Stop resisting. Take your hands away. Take your hands away now. After eight years of me doing the job, nothing's happened to me, but obviously t today and tomorrow's another day, so who knows? But the middle son is not, wasn't happy about me doing the job because he thinks that his mum would be in danger. Yeah, I was actually scared when the knife came out and he just pulled it. But anyway, I'll take my test again and hopefully this time I'll go for, I don't know, reliable driving schools, the ones that are well known. As well as having his car impounded, the driving instructor received a police caution for possession of a bladed object. Penalty charges and parking restrictions can be a frustration for motorists. But in Bishop Stortford, it's the lack of restrictions that has the residents up in arms. City-bound commuters are monopolising the spaces in a residential street. Mother of two, Helen, has lived on South Mill Road for the past 15 years. Helen's armed with posters that the residents hope will tackle the problem. See, so you have a nice evening. We've made up the posters and we're hoping they'll be able to put them in the front and back of their, their cars so they'll be seen from all angles. It's a sort of non-aggressive, sort of passive stand, um, just so the commuters know where we're at and to, just to remind them that this is a residential area and hopefully they could remember to park in the station car park or the town car park or anywhere else rather than South Mill Road. It does feel a little bit rebellious. <laughs> Wasn't allowed to be rebellious when I was young, so now I'm having my moment. <laughs> the protest has attracted the interest of the local paper. This is just a stand for us. We're just saying, please, look. Look around you. There's no off-road parking. Please don't take our spaces. Um, but yeah, no, it's exciting. It's great. And hopefully, you know, uh, the council will sit up and take notice. The residents will have to wait until the morning to see whether the posters will have any impact. Squashing on the M4, mate. In South London, Lambeth Council are clamping down on motorists trying to evade parking charges. Steve and his team have confiscated hundreds of blue badges that have been fraudulently used. This one is a, is a forged badge, it's a copied badge which was in use. There's another one that's been through a scanner. If you look at the hologram, the one on the top shines and the one on the bottom doesn't. The one on the bottom is a scanned copy. Another one here that you can see, it's, a, it's an old badge which has been changed. Somebody's got a felt tip pen and changed 2006 through 2009. Changing the expiry date carries a fine of £5,000 and up to five years in prison. Just repeat it for me so I make sure I've got the right one. There are some foreign websites. You can buy badges from 250 quid. Others we've had. £100 in pubs, £200. You know, we see respected members of society who get caught misusing blue badges. Doctors, nurses, teachers, police officers. People are willing to risk a criminal conviction and just paying a few pounds for parking. It's 6am. And Andy is looking out from his window to see if the commuters have taken any notice of the posters. Engine 
lights off, doors open. Oh, he's, look, oh, he's, looking, he's looking at the back window of the truck. Yeah, he's reading the poster. And he's got a woman with him, she's reading it as well. There's definitely more spaces along here now. I mean, it's, it's, this is the time of day when you would expect it to be quite, quite full. Hopefully that the message will sink in and they won't park here again. Hope springs eternal. It's a small victory for the residents of South Mill Road and they're hopeful the council will soon provide a more permanent solution. The No 2 mob are hoping people power will help them in their own battle over parking enforcement. Today, they're at a biker's cafe in Surrey, looking for new recruits. Guys, I don't know if you saw us right in, we would a lot that came in with the, uh, the mask on. What we're trying to do today by this is uh, to recruit some people to come out with us, see whether you like it, and what we do, we follow these cameras around, ensuring that what they do is correct and legal. We call ourselves shunters, scammer car hunters, shunters. We saw some the other day, didn't we? Saw the other day, he's standing behind his car like this. Yeah, right behind the bushes. He's, out, he's standing right at this one. No, these might be speed cameras. We don't do speed cameras. Oh, right. Uh, okay. Because that's... Oh, um, CCTV for parking uh, enforcement, right. Okay, parking yeah. enforcement. Oh, yeah. Hiding behind parked cars. Lifting the little periscope up. Well, exactly. It's all about empowerment for the, the people that we see have been oppressed for a long, long time. The whole system is rotten, really. Well, I think it's the time for everybody to stand up and be counted. So if you want to join us, you can. OK. Thank you. The No Two Mobs message seems to have struck a chord. What's the point of having a car if you can't park it anywhere? And, and, and you see these little camera cars, they're parked on double, double yellow lines themselves, illegally, whilst giving other people tickets for doing the same. When the signs are sort of not visible uh, and not correct, I think it's probably good what they're doing, but there are a lot of motorists who just blatantly disregard, you know, no left turn signs and park on zigzags, so I don't have any sympathy for those people. Hundreds of bikers have passed through, but it's not quite the uprising the No Two mob had planned for. Probably about 10 people said that they're going to sign up to the site. Now, I don't know how many of those people might actually come out shunting. It's really a suck it and see time. Lime Regis is preparing for its biggest day of the year, the Red Arrows Air Show. 10,000 visitors are expected. It's one of the busiest weekends for local businesses. Money we take on Red Arrows Day can be the equivalent to the whole of November, so it's a really key event for us. We need that boost to keep us going through the winter. But the town's bumper payday is under threat. Lyme's biggest car park has been turned into a building site. Emergency work is underway to save the area's coastline from crumbling into the sea. The work that, that's been going on here has, uh, is the, the last major phase of coast protection and slope stabilisation works. Without this phase of the work, about 240 houses would be lost over the next 50-odd years. Uh, we've taken about 270 spaces in, in this car park. Without the spaces, the town could lose hundreds of visitors. They hope CEOs will give motorists a break. It is a real problem. It's such a tiny town, and the only way people can really get here is to drive. And they shouldn't be made to feel unwelcome because there's not enough car parking. For local shopkeepers, there are no signs the CEOs are being more lenient. You've got lots of double yellow lines, quite narrow roads, and voracious wardens that just want to pick on people to earn their commission. Where you get people parking outside to make a quick purchase, uh, they're obviously going to go elsewhere, 
if they see one of the suited Taliban around. £60 fine, £40 if you pay within two weeks. I know because I've had them. In fact, I know people who get them quite a lot. And you only have to jump out the car for five minutes and you're in trouble. You get a lot of people who get quite hot-headed. I know there's a lot of honking and stuff. And it's, it's a sad way to start your day or your holiday in Lyme Regis, really. I'm afraid it's full right up at the moment. As the big day approaches, some visitors have already had enough. We're in the area for a week, and uh, we decided to come to Lyme Regis today, yes. We've been to uh, three car parks. It's a nice day, it's a nice town, and uh, we were looking forward to enjoying it, but I think we may have to go somewhere else. With just three weeks to go until the Red Arrows arrive, there seems little chance of the building work being finished in time. <laughs> oh, my God, come on, bet. In London, space is at a premium, making parking charges the highest in the country. Councils are taking a harsh line on illegal parking. And today, former police officer turned blue badge inspector, Steve, is patrolling outside a hospital. I think I'm good at spotting liars. I interview probably two or three people each day for blue badge misuse. I've heard every single story going. I enjoy being on street. I enjoy interacting with people. I enjoy educating people. And I enjoy prosecuting people, those that deserve it. Hi there. Good morning. My name's Steve Davidson. I'm from the parking. I deal with blue badges. Yeah. I'll just see you parked in the disabled bay where they badge displayed. Yeah. Whose badge is it? My husband's. Where is your hospital? Is he an inpatient? Yes. Why are you using his badge then? Because I have to pop some things to him and but you have parked in a bay that's designated for a disabled person. Your husband's disabled in man. Yeah, but he's in hospital, so he doesn't need to use the badge today. You cannot use your husband's badge to park here while he's in the hospital. The offence carries a maximum fine of £1,000 and could lead to a criminal record. You have committed a criminal offence by misusing... Criminal offence by misusing the badge. I need to tell you this is important. Right. And I'm going to tell you that you're going to be reported for that offence. And what that will mean is you'll be get a summons and you'll have to go before the local magistrate's court to explain to them why you are misusing your husband's badge today. And you have to take responsibility for that because you're the person that's using it. OK? OK, I'm done. Thank you very much. Having a blue badge is a lifeline for 86-year-old Kenneth from Bolton. I need my car as much as anything to, uh, to visit my wife who, who has dementia and, and has had for something like 14 years. And I go to the uh, leisure centre for swimming and I only started to learn to swim when I was 80, you know. Every parking space has its own unique set of restrictions, which motorists can find confusing. Kenneth picked up a penalty charge when he used his blue badge to park in this permit holder's bay. It was at this post that the back of my car was roughly about here. There's no yellow lines, and, and they tell me that because there's a sign up, they don't need to put yellow lines. So I don't know. It's all uh, it's all a mix-up, really. And uh, I think the only the traffic wardens can understand them. The one old lady had complained about the height of that. I said all along, I wasn't aware that uh, I was parking illegally. Kenneth appealed his PCN to the local council, but they upheld the fine. In two days' time, his case will be heard at the Traffic Penalty Tribunal. Yeah, well, like a dog with a bone, uh, everything I do is thorough, and, and uh, 
and it just bugs me. I mean, for a night or two, uh, uh, I don't think I slept. <laughs> uh, yes, I was just worrying of the consequences. Uh, uh, really, uh, seventy pound for 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 parking there. It's a lot of money. Having carefully prepared his evidence, Kenneth is eager to have his say and avoid the penalty. In the UK, more than a million motorists are being chased over unpaid parking fines. Worthing Council have called in bailiffs Debbie and Ben to recover the debts. We are on our way to Worthing and we've got some warrants of execution to find if there's anybody who has got parking fines that they've not paid. When the bailiff's letters are ignored, they start knocking on doors. And at the moment, you have got a debt of £377.44. How comes it's £377? Because pounds? you've ignored the letters that, that have been sent from the council. But right now, I've got £6. Mm -hmm. £6 to feed my family. Right. That's all I've got in my account is £6. And if we can't pay the full amount, what happens? You take my car? Uh, if not, then we would be looking to come into the house to do a house removal of your goods. We'd have to take nearly £3,000 worth of goods. It's only worth about 10% at public auction. Oh We've had, like, less people paying over, like, their parking tickets. Before the recessions hit, people would use their credit cards and they would have savings and things like that to pay their, their parking fines, where now they're using their credit cards, savings and any other spare cash they've got on everyday living. So it has got worse. The cameras have picked up a car in Worthing. Attention. Right, there you go. The bailiffs clamp the car to stop the owner driving away before the debt um, is paid. A lot of the time, can't have some work. Because obviously, as soon as that clamps on, that's going to do a lot of damage and try driving off there. We're going to put this all on and then we will go and knock on the door to see if we can get them to pay. It's not that scary, but obviously you just don't know what's behind a door. I wouldn't want to be going in there by myself, so that's why we work in twos. Hi there, sorry to bother you. I'm looking for a Stefan Kovacs. Yeah. Is that you? Right, and so Bailiff's from White & Co. Um, but you're not payment a parking fine. And at the moment, the outstanding debt is that's uh, 351 and four pence. Right. You haven't got money, no? Cash. Uh, can you pay by card? You got a, a debit card? I have, yeah. After six months of evading the fine, he finally pays up. Because he's not paid when he had the ticket at £30, at the original price, because he hasn't done that, we've now had to come out and it's now cost him over £350. With the fine paid, the car is released. You'll be surprised once push comes to shove and the bailiffs are at your door. I think panic stations happen and then nine times out of ten people do find the money somewhere. In Bolton, Kenneth's been having sleepless nights over his outstanding parking fine. After months of preparing his evidence and a six-month wait for his appeal hearing, he finally has news. They'd phoned me up to say that the adjudicator had already been through the notes and, uh, and came to the conclusion that uh, there was sort of no case to answer, really. Kenneth was due to have a hearing at the TPT today. I'm glad it's turned out how it has done, but I've not been able to have my say. I'm sort of uh, keyed up like a footballer, really. You're strained all week and then you're on the bench for the match. Uh, <laughs> Official guidelines state blue badges can't be used in permit place. But the adjudicator has let Kenneth off 
as the legislation is currently under review. I looked at the papers and I, and I knew that he, he, he would technically win. So if, if I have a case where the, the appellant's going to win, then I don't see any purpose at all in making him come along to, to a hearing. Uh, to me, they seem to have been playing a game of uh, who can give in, uh, who can go the longest. And uh, now we're prepared to go to the end. In East London, the No 2 mob are preparing for a day out shunting. It's been six weeks since their recruitment day at the Bikers Cafe, and no one signed up. But an unlikely volunteer has found them. Tracy, nice you could join us. Um, welcome to the No 2 mob. This is Kill Switch. I'm Bald Eagle. Um, it brings people's Tracy is a mum of two and a model. Um, we wear the mask. I don't think you really need a mask. <laughs> <laughs> it might rain and melt my makeup. <laughs> I heard about the No 2 mob after I received a bus lane ticket in Himmel Hempstead. I tried to appeal and it was turned down, um, so I sought advice and found the No 2 mob online. The No 2 mob helped to uncover that the bus lane signs were incorrect, meaning Tracy's fine, along with thousands of others, was issued illegally. Hemel Hempstead Council. I think they returned a million pounds or something that was wrongly fined. So for me to give my time in exchange for how they've helped me um, is a, a definite trade. Uh, radio test, radio test. Uh, who's receiving, over? Come on. Getting the twitches. Need to get going. <laughs> I can't say I've really ever spent a Saturday with a load of men on motorbikes, but it's, it's a life experience. Great to be involved. Tracy will be a fantastic addition to the No 2 mob. I'm sure it's going to be very different from the hairy biker image that we've portrayed in the past. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not sure my wife's looking forward to it, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's a no right turn. Um, no left turn, sorry. And all the cars have to go the right way because there's a camera car down there um, waiting to catch people coming around the corner. Can you see the car all the way down, down, there? down there? The silver car. Well, how is he a deterrent all the way down there to people from turning left? He isn't. He's there to just raise revenue, to capture people after they turn left here. No left turn. You'll get fined. There's a car down there. I'll get out of your way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, she, she's absolutely fine. She ducked to water. She was there holding her, holding her sign. When uh, pedestrians walked past and wanted to know what was going on, she explained what we was doing. Yeah, absolutely fine. Really, really good. I think justice should be done in the world, and it's not fair to pick on people that are innocent. They shouldn't be scared into paying fines that aren't really enforceable. It's something I feel passionate about, and as I've been wronged, I'd like to stop other people from being in the same position. <laughs> in Lyme Regis, it's the day of the Red Arrows air show. And coastal protection work is still taking up the main car park. Locals are worried about how they're going to make room for the thousands of cars flooding into the town. Just get on the back. CEOs have been deployed to do their best to fit everyone in. Uh, Gary, we're full up here at the top at Hombush. I'm going to shut this one down. How is the harbour end doing? Over. There's still about 14 one four spaces at the far end of Monmouth Beach. Over. Yeah, that was safe. Thank you. But local businesses are worried vital tourist trade is going to be turned away. I haven't got many royal babies left, have I? Red Arrow Day is really a key flag event because it makes people come to the town who would not necessarily come on other days. However, if people can't park, they won't come again. It's a while before the start of the show, and John's car park is already full. Yep, yeah, that'll do. Now cars are being turned away. We are completely full. There isn't a space anywhere. Uh, park and ride is the best one. 
that's up the top of the hill that way. Uh, how long will it be for you at the top of Cobb Road? We've got like, gridlock here, over. As desperate drivers search for a space, the police are called in for backup. It's full up down there, full. Like, the police will stop you halfway down, I expect. Oh, yeah. They don't read signs either, we've learnt. So you just let them go, because they find out in the long run that, that you're telling the truth and there is no space down there. There isn't any space, trust me. We're full right up. But we've just been driving around for about an hour. Yeah. By parking. Well, you won't find any today. Everywhere is full right up. But this driver won't take no for an answer. I'm looking for a silver car, the one that was just arguing. So it'll find a spot. And they're still shouting at each other. Can you hear them? You can't, oh, man. There is always one. We'll just go back on the grass. No, all right. Thank it's you. All right. Don't forget your ticket, though. No. <laughs> well, it's hot. <laughs> They've got kids. You know, daylight's a day with the red arrows. It's very popular. And you have to make exceptions and use spaces that you normally wouldn't use. We've managed to park as many as we can. So there should be some happy punters. Finally, thousands of people who have managed to park make their way to the show. Oh, yay! Oh, yay! The people of Lyme Regis welcome the Red Arrows! Today's been a good day for business. Um, lots of people in the town. A few frayed tempers on the roads, um, but pretty, pretty good. The traffic Taliban were around this lunchtime. You know, they come here one day of the year and do their job, that's fine. It's pretty incredible. We've already exceeded our best ever day today because they've come so early, so we've been trading since 9 o'clock this morning. A lot of people have come on the bus. I think a lot of people have used the park and ride. But somehow, we have managed to fit them all in. That's been a real success, yes. <laughs> We're very pleased. <laughs> Next time, the bailiffs get tough. If you can't get the money, you must just put your hands up and just say, I can't get me money. What are you going to do? Take my motor, sell it in auction, get your money. What happens then to me? All right, going on, switching on the gas and sticking my head in and out. Motorists fight back. You've got no compassion doing the job that you're doing. Is that what you're doing? Is, it, is that what you're doing? It's a public servant, is it? And an unlikely parking superhero emerges. If you ever have a ticket, ring that number. 